Good afternoon, my name is Juan Vasquez. I'm a student of Colorado, Colorado Christian University, and this afternoon I have the great pleasure of sharing with you my working thesis, Unmasking Hidden Rules, Cultivating Adaptive and Servant Leaders in Authoritarian Milieus. Gerald Dempsey stated in 2013, we will never predict with any accuracy what the future holds. After more than nine years of conflict, the development of adaptive leaders who are comfortable operating in bigwity and complexity will increasingly be our competitive advantage against future threats to our nation. I want to let that sink in for a second. A general from the United States military, which represents an authoritarian environment and autocratic leadership has just used the words adaptive leadership in a quote. And this happened in 2013. Problem statement. A highly competitive, extremely mundane, and performance goal oriented society, how does a technical expert transition into an intrinsic and learning goal oriented, values aligned leader? Now, before we move forward, I'm going to go ahead and share with you the story or the experience that prompted this research. A subject matter expert within the military decided to transition to a leadership role. The reason why he did this or made this decision was because when he was a baby soldier and he entered the military, a leader saw in him some potential and prompted him to go from an enlisted person, entry level, follower, a sheep, if you may, into a subject matter expert. Now, within four years of being in military service, this soldier had the opportunity to enter into fly school. And he spent 10 years as a pilot in the military. He learned all the technical intricacies associated with flying helicopters in combat, day, night, instrument flying. He also learned how to manage programs of instructional or maintenance programs associated with the aircraft. Within this role he was the advisor to the leaders on how to conduct aviation missions. Then he decided to transfer from being a subject matter expert into a formal positional leader. When he made this decision now he was faced with a cognitive dissonance of the expectation that his leaders had of him to operate within the autocratic authoritarian environment. Now to this point his power base as a leader was his experience. Soon he was told your experience does not matter anymore. You need to develop a new set of experience now to persuade with charisma your followers and to influence them to do what you need them to do to get the mission accomplished. And this is where the thought of a transition was awakened within this individual. He entered Colorado Christian University and he started a master's in organizational leadership. And a funny reality is the fact that one of his commanders told him, you don't need to learn about leadership through a Christian university because the army is going to teach you how to be a leader. The problem was that this leader now had a huge knowledge disparity between his peers. He had been operating at the advisory level of three levels up from where his peers were operating. He was running circles around them. But he was challenged by his followers and by his peers. And now with his new power of positional leadership, he was tempted to betray the same people that were following him, which he depended to get things done. And you may ask, how did this betrayal happen? The betrayal happens because this leader knows why his followers do certain things, because he has been there, he has done it. And then he also has the temptation to be pigeonholed 
or he has a temp temptation to rely on his technical comfort zone, which then serves as micromanagement of his followers because he's telling them exactly what to do. That diffuses collaboration, that diffuses delegation. And this creates a feeling of betrayal of his soldiers. Now, when his followers feel betrayed, this leader has a tremendous temptation to enter something called by the Arbiter Institute, Inward Mindset. Now, for you to have an inward mindset, you have to betray a sense from within of doing the right thing. The premise is that before you choose to do the wrong thing, we all have the capacity to honor the right feeling. But when we're confronted with that right feeling, we betray it for some reason or other, and we justify ourselves, and we decrease our fault, and we increase the fault of the other person. And this is what they call collusion, because now the other person is going to justify their behavior, and is going to decrease their fault and increase yours. Who is in the leadership position? Who should know better? The leader. Who are the leaders, the senior leaders of that subject matter expert going to look at to hold the answer? The follower of the leader. The leader. This creates a very uncomfortable situation for that subject matter expert. So, in my research I discovered a path that will facilitate a transition from the subject matter expert to be a values-aligned leadership within an autocratic environment. My first discovery was an outward mindset. It makes sense. We were just in an inward mindset, so now we flow into an outward mindset. But this outward mindset facilitates the opportunity for that leader, instead of looking at his followers as objects, which are, are either vehicles, barriers, or irrelevancies for him to meet his objectives, now he sees his followers as persons who have objectives, challenges, and needs of their own, and it's his job to meet them. From this heart now, the leader can go ahead and apply servant leadership. But it's very important to understand that you cannot, you cannot apply servant leadership from an inward mindset of selfishness. You have to have an outward mindset. The next step in my transition path for a subject matter expert who turned into a leader is courageous follower. Now that you are a seventh leader, you are open to understand that you have courageous followers who are going to come to you and provide you constructive feedback that are going to make you a better leader and going to make a better organization. Once you are open to this idea of courageous follower, you have the opportunity to increase your credibility pool not based on your experience in the technical area but based on your experience with people by understanding their strengths, their heart, their attitudes, their personalities and their experience. This is offered to us by Lehman. In this path of transition the next step is that now you are open to delegate because you know the shape of your followers. By you knowing the shape of your followers, now you can correctly and accurately delegate to your personnel and execute while you focus on their objectives, challenges, and needs. And you focus on being a servant leader. Now we're ready to enter the area of collaboration and followership because you have an understanding of the different types of followers. You have the sheep. You have the yes people. You have the alienated, you have the pragmatic, and you have the star followers. And it's important for us to recognize those five followership styles so we can go ahead and increase the collaboration. But as things get better for a former subject matter expert who turns into a leader, we have this new framework that the military, although it's only applying it at a strategic level at this point, hopefully we'll get soon to apply it at the direct and organizational levels. Now this is important to understand because we have one of the major autocratic and authoritarian environments moving into an adaptive leadership phenomenon. Now 
Adaptive leadership phenomenon is so important and so valuable because it is more of a prescriptive approach to leadership that does not focus on attributes and traits and behaviors of a leader, but actually focuses on the leader observing if we have technical challenges or adaptive challenges. If it's a technical challenge, the leader simply applies a solution within the construct of knowledge and says, hey, let's fix this, fix this technically. But if it's an adaptive challenge, the leader has to step back and he has to facilitate change and help his team through collaboration find solutions to the challenge. That is what adaptive leadership is and that's where the subject matter expert could very, very immensely bring value to organizations. So at this point of my research, I have sent out my questionnaires to my audience. I have yet to receive it back. But the survey is a survey of 10 questions, and the first eight questions apply a Likert scale. And the last two questions are essay format to go ahead and collect uh, personal views and sentiments of each participant. My anticipated results are that SMEs will demonstrate a lack of recognition of the need for a transition. I also suspect that SMEs will also demonstrate a lack of knowledge of their tendency to rely on experience over persuasion when confronted with ethical and moral dilemmas. I also suspect that supervisors of former SME leaders will express frustration over the lack of people skills and finally, I also anticipate that supervisors will recommend either SMEs be restricted to thought leaders or of them to develop behaviors and traits of leadership versus adaptive leadership, which is more of a, a prescriptive approach. In conclusion, this subject matter expert did, complete, did a complete circle because now as he has arrived through this understanding of what leadership is, he asks himself, why did I transition into a formal position as a leader? When I could have done all this from my subject matter expert influence. Also, why positional leadership? Why not simply, as previously stated, stay as a subject matter expert? especially when there are no formal transition programs. Recognized by the subject matter expert or recognized by the executives who are promoting subject matter expert into leadership positions. But here's a paradox. It provides some cons consolation. The fact that the subject matter expert decided to venture into a leadership role made him aware of the lack of transition programs and facilitated within him to seek for a development program for subject matter experts to transition into leadership positions and probably paving the way for future subject matter experts or he himself being able to facilitate to adaptive leadership subject matter experts into leaders. Now it's important to also recognize the other side of this. Hopefully through this research and future research in this area we can go ahead and collect buy-in from executives to offer transition programs with subject matter expert. And hopefully our academia can increase the awareness of the lack of transition programs with subject matter expert and start including into text, such as the Masters in Organizational Leadership for the school that I'm doing this case study on. And finally, a path of servant leadership to our mindset into adaptive leadership and what comes after that is the way to go for a subject matter expert who transitions into a leadership role. I want to thank you for your, the opportunity that I had to present this to you. If you have any questions, please contact me. Um, I'm a student at Colorado Christian University and I can be reached at, at jvrdpr at gmail.com. Thank you.